Today we are talking about this, the Cadex Polar Starlight camera that is designed to be used with the DJI Digital FPV system. And in this video I'm going to give you my thoughts having spent quite a bit of time with it. Now since this camera released quite a few things have changed and every time I've gone to make this video I've had to go back and start again because the seas have kept moving due to a little bit of noise and that noise has been around the encryption that this camera came with. It was originally going to be the first camera that would support encryption moving forward on new air units. That was going to be brought in to mean that only official cameras from the likes of Cadex and DJI would work with their ear units and cameras from other manufacturers wouldn't. However, due to some rough seas, that is no longer going to take place. And whilst this camera is encrypted, the information that we have today from both DJI and Cadex is that all cameras moving forward and backwards will continue to work. Nothing is going to change. Now, before we jump into taking a closer look at this one, I bought it with the DJI ear unit. You can get it with the Cadex Vista or you can get it as the standalone as well. Now, one of the more interesting things about this camera is it is available. It is one of the only cameras for the DJI FPV system that has been available as well and that's why this one has got so much attention right now because it is a new camera designed to be used with the system and you can actually buy it. Now just before we jump into taking a closer look I'm not going to make you wait until the end of this video to give you my thoughts. I'm going to now tell you very quickly what I think about this camera so if you don't want to waste your time watching the rest of it you don't have to and my thoughts on this camera are as follows. It has some of the best image quality I've seen. It's really good. The colors are really good. The night feature is okay. However, it has one major failing in my opinion, and that is auto white balance. Unfortunately, you can't turn it off. And if you wanted to use this camera to record with the DJI ear units in daylight, you may be disappointed. And I will talk about that a little bit more as we get through. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a look at what you actually get and then I'll come back and talk a bit more about the footage that we're going to show you as well. So first of all, taking a quick look at the kit itself. Now, a couple of other people have done this, so I'm going to keep this fairly short. Um, this is the Polar Ear Unit kit with the official DJI Ear Unit. You can see down here, it shows that it's a licensed version. Now, something I found interesting on this packet when I first got it, I noticed here, and it says scratch to verify. So they've added this scratch section to the back. It's not something I've actually done yet. But let me just grab something like a plastic spatula. And I can actually scratch it off. And that way, it's actually showing you a number under the sticker that I suppose makes it say it's legit now i don't really know what any of this does let me just grab my camera on my phone so let me just go to my camera it's asked it to open up you can now see that it's come up on a cadex fpv verification check inquire requests are frequent try again and it just errors it, that, that, it doesn't say it's legit it doesn't say it isn't legit it it just seems like complete nonsense to me but anyway so okay it's me from the future here and having gone and looked at the footage in post i can see that it did actually work if you watch slowly on the screen i press the inquire button and now i'm waiting for something to happen at this point i assume it hasn't worked and i reach over to press it again however as i do you can see the message has changed and it says the security code you're looking for is a genuine product so it does actually do what it's meant to do what happened for me was i did this I then pressed it again, it said there'd been too many requests, and then a third time it said that this had actually already been checked before, and that's when it starts to throw the security concerns. I do think Cadex need to change this a little bit because it's not that intuitive, but it did actually work, I just couldn't see it was doing anything. I assume it's legit. So anyway, let's get in the box. So inside, we've got the top. 
E-unit manual. And something really interesting is all of this now is CADEX. If you look, E-unit manual, user manual, CADEX.com, Instagram, it's all CADEX. There's nothing to DJI here whatsoever. So in this kit, we get the DJI traditional E-unit. We have two antennas. Just to pop these out. As you can see, they say DJ on the top. These are the usual antennas that we get with all of the normal A units. We'll get that one out in a sec. We've got the new Polar Starlight camera and we've got the A unit itself. Now, as you can see, it is labeled DJI FPV A unit. Everything looks exactly the same on this as all of the other A units I have. There is no change I can see whatsoever. Just comparing that to another DJI A unit I've got on the bench, as you can see, sorry, it's P1AS on the model number, not P1SA. Um, you can see this is my original A unit. This has got a DJI camera on it. It's it's a quite a recent one, but it's it's not um, it's not the one that came with this. Exactly the same, no change whatsoever. So again, this does look like the same DJI A unit that they've always shipped. Then moving up, we've got the usual cable. Now this does look more like the original DJI cable as well, actually, which is quite interesting. Um, and then you've got the new Polar Starlight camera. Now this is a lot bigger than the smaller cameras that uh, CADEX have released in the past. So we do have the Nebula that is from them. I'm just going to grab that now in a second. This is the new Starlight with the new lens as well from CADEX and it's got the plastic cover on the back. Made in China, says CADEX FPV. What we'll do is we'll pop that off and just take a closer look underneath. Okay, so I've popped the back off now and you can see the inside of the camera. So I'm gonna very carefully pop off this, uh, the MIPI connector. There we go, he's now off. As you can see, um, for the first time on this one, this is quite interesting. This chip is labeled CADEX. Now to me, that looks like it's been um, sanded and, and lasered afterwards. It's, it's obviously, they've done that to try and mask the, what the name of the actual chip is. It's been done to actually mask that, obviously, with all of the hoo-ha going on at the moment between CADEX and RunCam. Um, it's been done for that reason. Now, this camera is very similar to the other ones, including the RunCam MIPI, in the sense of does not support low latency mode, it does not support 4x3, and it does not have the camera controls as part of the menu options in the FPV goggles. So it doesn't have all of the features you've come to expect on the standard DJI cameras. It's very similar to the other models such as the Nebula Micro, the Nebula Nano, and the Runcam MIPI. Okay, so just lining it up with some other cameras, we've got obviously the new uh, Polar Starlight, we've got the Runcam MIPI, we've got the Nebula Nano, and then we've got the original DJI camera here, just to give you an idea of the overall shape and size compared. So what you can see is on the MIPI, it's a lot shorter with that lens, and that's why some people have started to see with the MIPI their frames being in view on the side, because it's it got a wider field of view, but it's also a much shorter lens stock as well. Whereas on the Starlight, you can see that it is sticking out further. Now, this is an interesting camera because it does have a larger sensor than these other cameras here. Now, depending on which chart you're looking at and which actual sensor they've used will depend on the size, but it is a larger sensor overall. Now, most of these cameras here have a 1 3.2 or 1 third of an inch CMOS sensor, whereas this is a 1 1 8th, which does make it larger overall. Now, the charts may show a slight difference in size. To give you an idea, a 1 3 inch sensor is 4.8 by 3.6 mil, whereas the 1 1 8th should be 7.2 by 5.4. So it is a larger sensor overall. It might not be those dimensions exactly, but it is a sensor that's going to allow it to have larger pixels, and that's why it has that much better low light performance. Now, one other thing I just want to touch on with this camera is regarding controlling the settings. Now, as I've already said, this camera has no functionality in the goggles. You cannot adjust brightness, you cannot change any of the settings at all. However, there are some limited settings that you can change on this camera, 
if you have this little joystick board. Now this does not come with the Polar Starlight. You can get it from Cadex as a separate accessory and I actually got this for about £8 in the UK. It does come with some other Cadex cameras so if you do already have a two-wire Cadex joystick control board that will work with this camera. Now this does not let you change everything. It has very limited functionality that we'll take a closer look at in a minute. It's also worth noting that this board is not plug and play. You actually have to solder it onto two pads that are located above the MIPI connector. They do include this extra little cable in the pack with the camera and what you simply need to do is cut one side off, solder it onto those two pads and then plug it into the joystick board. So that's what I'm going to do next and then we'll just take a look at what options you do have available. So having got the joystick connected, all I found I was able to adjust was brightness. I could adjust it up and down, there's no on-screen menus, there's nothing, it's simply put the joystick down, the brightness goes down, put the joystick up, the brightness goes up. I counted I think 14 or 15 steps, but that's it, that's literally all you have. Pressing the button doesn't bring up any menus, it is simply a brightness adjustment. Frankly it's not worth spending the eight quid or the eight dollars. If you do have a board and you want to adjust it, okay, but really you're not getting any other options as far as I can see than just this basic brightness control. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is show you a little bit of flight footage. Now, I haven't put a lot together, to be honest. The reason is, I've done a lot of flying with this camera in pretty poor weather because the weather here in the UK for the last couple of weeks has been all over the place. I have though tried it in bright conditions, dark conditions and in complete nighttime as well. And I'm just going to show you some quick footage I took right at the start when I got the camera because the weather was quite good and then a little bit of nighttime footage as well. Now there is a lot more videos out there with lots and lots of footage on this. The first flight you're going to see was me simply trying the camera for the first time. It was actually a tuning flight because I was retuning beta flight at the same time as well. It's literally a DOS around the fields and then we're going to jump into some night footage too. Okay, these were my very first flights with the camera and the first thing you'll notice is that colour shift at takeoff. That is the white balance shifting and this is something that this camera does all the time. As I come over there, you can see the, as the flip goes round and the light level changes, the white balance on this camera just shifts. Now, this is a massive shame in my opinion. The overall image quality is really good. It looks good in bright daylight. The image quality itself, the resolution looks good as well. It's just if you're going to want to record with this footage, this shift in white balance is really going to give you some problems. Further to that, you may have also spotted the fisheye. It is bad on this lens as well. It's not particularly an issue for me personally, but you can see it as I'm moving around on the horizon. And that's why I was doing a bit of moving here just to be able to show you it in real time. Now here was just some low stuff so I could just have a look at this white balance shift in more detail. You could see there again as I came over the white balance actually shifted. This is another flight a couple of days later in much more darker conditions but again you can see that white balance shift as it's moving around. As the Polar Starlight is designed as a low light camera, I wanted to test it at night. Now, as you can see from my phone footage, it was very, very dark, probably a bit darker than this camera is designed for. However, as you can see, it does a fairly decent job. This was pitch black. I literally could not see 
much in front of my face at all. At this point, the light level is still dropping and I'll show you a second bit of footage from that now as well. But as you can see, you do have visibility. Now, the visibility in the sky is pretty good and you can obviously then see the lighting off the properties nice and clearly. But when you do start getting towards the bottom of the image with the light level over the grass, things do get very difficult and there's certainly not a lot of detail there. It does a decent job though and you're able to see what you're doing. However, this camera is really designed for low light, not no light. I did do a couple of really nice flights at dusk and it looked really good. Unfortunately, I didn't have it recording because my intention was to come back and do it again, but the weather bit me on the bottom on that one. Now this is a second flight in virtual total darkness and as you can see compared to the first one things have got very much darker again. Now to be honest I pretty much aborted this flight because it was just too dark. I couldn't see anything. However as you can see I'm coming back in and it was so dark it was almost impossible to see. In fact I did get very close to myself on the landing. Now, just before I wrap this up and give you my thoughts, I just want to talk a bit about latency because I know JB mentioned in his video that he was seeing a bit of latency on his one, but other people haven't. Now, I have to say, I haven't seen any latency issues on this either. I know RC Shim has done some tests. I think JB reached out to him and he's tested it on his camera latency test system, which is an oscilloscope. And I'll talk about that because I've built one myself and he hasn't seen any issues either. Now, I don't doubt for one second that JB saw that latency. If there's any eyes and hands that will see it, it is JB's. Don't really understand what the trigger for that was. However, no way am I going to say he wasn't seeing that. I haven't experienced it and it's just going to be interesting to see what turns up over the next couple of weeks and months, whether it's a faulty camera or not, because he has put an update out as well. Now, as I have mentioned, I built my own latency test rig as well, very much based on the method that RC Shim Mario uses. And that is you use an oscilloscope to measure the difference in time between a reaction on the camera and goggles. So you do this by firing an LED into the camera and then measuring the time it takes for that to change at the goggle side to give you end-to-end -end latency. I've built this using a white LED that we fire into the camera. That then triggers the oscilloscope and then you are measuring the change in output on either a photodiode or an LDR and I've tried it on actually both devices and there's not a lot of difference between them and then that gives you the rough actual latency. Now I've built my own little rig on it and I'm going to be talking about this a lot more in a future video but if I just put this trace up on the screen you can see this is one of the consistent outputs that I've been getting. The yellow trace is actually the point of me firing the LED and triggering the scope and the other trace is actually the change in light level as being detected by the goggles via the LDR. As you can see there is a consistent 30-32 milliseconds at the point of that light level changing and that then ramping up as the brightness increases and if you actually look at the hoop come up and down the reason it comes down is that's the automatic gain control in the camera actually winding the brightness of the LED back. What I can say in these tests is it has been extremely consistent. Yes, there will always be run to run variances because you've got to take into account the frame rate because roughly 14 milliseconds can take place between each frame. You've got to take into account the rasterization and how the frame is being drawn, whether it's interlaced or progressive. However, in all of my tests, I've been able to narrow this down to be able to get consistent results. And I'm happy that I'm seeing no more latency on this camera compared to any of the other ones. So to give you my thoughts, and whilst I have said at the start I've given you them, I haven't told you everything. And if you have stuck around till now, I really do appreciate it. So this camera, should you buy it? Well, the answer to that is yes, regardless, because it's available. 
and the best camera you can get for the DJI system is the one you can actually buy. And right now, the Polar Starlight has literally been the only camera that's been available to actually order that is official. However, I do want to also say at the point of me recording this bit of the video, it is out of stock again. Now, what are the good and what are the bad points? Well, the good point about this camera is it has really nice image quality and colours. I actually really like how it looks. It looks really good in flight. Overall, that is good. It's nice. It's got that night mode and it's handy that it does work in that low level. And whilst I didn't record some footage I did take the other day when I was out, it really looks quite good at dusk as the light level is coming down and it really does stand out at that point. Unfortunately, the weather has prevented me from getting that footage recorded, but I did do a couple of flights and I intended to go back out and do one to record, but unfortunately the weather bit me on that one. Now, whilst there is a lot of good there's some real issues with this camera number one it has quite bad fisheye if you look at the footage you can see it and number two that auto white balance makes it basically unusable if you're going to record the footage on the DJI DVR. If you're going to put a GoPro, it's not a massive issue, but if you are someone that likes to record the footage on the ear unit and use it, the auto white balance makes it a no-go because the second you do any flips and rolls or the light level changes, it shifts and the color changes as well. Now, this camera is not going to suit everyone. It doesn't have the low latency mode, which means even if you could put up with the shift in white balance, if you're an out and out FPV freestyle, you're going to feel it because it's not the low latency model as well. It doesn't have the onboard camera controls, but you do have the option with the little menu to adjust brightness. But again, it's almost pointless to be completely honest and I wouldn't waste your money getting the board. But again, my thoughts at the end are still the same as I said at the beginning there. You should probably buy one because it's one of the only cameras available right now. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the Cadex Paola Starlight. Please do let me know what you think about this camera as well. There are loads of reviews out there. If you want to see footage on this camera, go check out Albert Kim's, go check out JB's, go check out RC Shims. Loads of people have done reviews on this camera and the RC. They've put a lot more footage out than I have. It got to the stage where I'd recorded a bit and I just thought, well, I've seen everything I need to see. I'm going to talk a lot around everything else. But if you want to see more out and out footage, please do check out their videos. Now, that is it from me on this one. If you've liked what you've seen, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links to buy me a coffee as well as Patreon in the description too. It's only by you guys using them am I able to keep buying products like this to be able to make independent reviews like this one here. Anyway, that's it from me. Please stay safe and I will speak to you guys again soon.